Relics were big news in medieval Europe. To have a bone or a fragment of clothing from a saint or an apostle could bring in pilgrims from far and wide. As a consequence churches across the continent scrambled to get in on the action, often passing off relics they knew to be fake as the real deal. The biggest box office draws were relics associated with Jesus Christ, and they didn't get much bigger than a fragment from the cross on which he was crucified. Welcome back to the Top Trendy Info channel, if it's your first time here please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for fast hand info as they happen. Relics were big news in medieval Europe. To have a bone or a fragment of clothing from a saint or an apostle could bring in pilgrims from far and wide. As a consequence churches across the continent scrambled to get in on the action, often passing off relics they knew to be fake as the real deal. The biggest box office draws were relics associated with Jesus Christ, and they didn't get much bigger than a fragment from the cross on which he was crucified. It is said that it was Helena Augusta, the mother of the Roman sovereign Constantine, who found the genuine cross at the site of the Holy Sepulchre, the slope on which Jesus was killed close by the lawbreakers Gestas and Dismas. As indicated by the 4th century student of history Socrates Scholasticus, Helena had the agnostic sanctuary that involved the site destroyed and the slope uncovered. Three crosses were evidently revealed, together with the nails used to hang Christ to the cross and the titulus crucis the sign bearing the words, Jesus the Nazarene Lord of the Jews that was hung on the cross. The crosses were then introduced in turn to a terminally ill woman, who was healed after contacting the one which had borne Christ. This, Helena was persuaded, was the genuine cross. The majority of the cross was shipped off Constantinople, and after the terminating of that city during the Fourth Crusade of 1204, it was separated and disseminated across Europe. In the long run, there were so many temples professing to have a piece of the genuine cross that it provoked the theologian John Calvin to say that assuming they were undeniably added together, building a boat would be able. Calvin's distrust was rationalized by the way that the blood of Christ transformed the cross into an indestructible article, meaning it very well, may be split a boundless number of times but stay undiminished. Anxious to keep the worthwhile trade relics alive and the pilgrims flowing through their entryways, convents, and holy places across Europe joyfully embraced this clarification. Many pieces of the true cross were encased in precious metal boxes adorned with jewels. These were placed in specially built reliquaries that also held other supposed relics such as the bones of saints, parts of the nails used in the crucifixion and even the baby teeth of Christ. These became focal points for worshippers, and several religious veneration ceremonies were established, such as the Feast of the Finding of the Cross, which was celebrated by Roman Catholics until Pope John XI removed it from the calendar in 1960. While a large portion of the alleged pieces of the true cross have been lost over hundreds of years of strict and mainstream disturbance, there are still a few sections in presence today. The absolute biggest parts to survive can be found in Europe's significant religious organizations like St. Peter's Basilica in Rome and Notre Lady House of Prayer in Paris. One part, in the meantime, is supposed to be in an extremely weird spot without a doubt. Three little pieces of the genuine cross are held in the Cappella del Reliquy of the Sante Croce in Jerusalem Church in Rome, with other two thorns from the crown of thistles, part of one of the nails utilized during the execution and a piece of the titulus crucis. The congregation once held a bigger part of the cross, however this was moved to St. Peter's Basilica on the sets of Pope Metropolitan VIII in 1629. Initially housed in the Church of Saint-Chapelle in Paris, this section of the genuine cross was gained by Lord Louis IX from Baldwin of Constantinople in the 13th century. During the French upset, the safeguarding of relics was restricted aside from where they were decided to have high imaginative legitimacy. The piece of the true cross held in Saint-Chapelle was given over to the priest of Paris in 1804. It was housed in the depository of Notre Dame Cathedral until it was moved to the Louvre following the church building fire in 2019. The Chancellor of the Realm of Jerusalem, Philip de Maziers, gave the school in Venice a piece of the genuine cross in 1369. A reliquary was constructed to house the section, and a wonder should have in short order followed. It is expressed that during a parade, the piece of the cross was inadvertently dropped into a channel. Rather than sinking, the section is said to have drifted over the water and afterward avoided all endeavors to recover it until the first beneficiary of the piece, the school's head, Andrea Venderman, made a plunge and saved it. Many other places claim to have a piece of the true cross, including St. Peter's Abbey in the Belgian town of Ghent and the monastery of Kautlamuja in Greece. One of the most surprising places where a piece of the true cross apparently can be found is at the bottom of the Black Sea. 
The district archpriest of the Ukrainian port of Sevastopol claimed that a piece of the true cross was placed in the chapel of the Russian cruiser, Moskva. The ship was sunk in 2020 during the Russia-Ukraine war, and it is said that the fragment of the cross went down with her. Kindly keep following for more updates. Tell us what you think about this on the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.